time. That's right. Welcome to another edition of Talking Giants YouTube with Bobby Skinner and Anthony Tomeno. If you haven't been here before, what we do is we go into players and we look at specific plays and their technique and how it translates to the New York Giants. We've done a ton of breakdowns over draft season. We've done a few on our free agents. Uh, we're looking at Matthew Pert today, our third round draft pick, which some could argue was pretty controversial, especially if we picked a tackle already in the first round. But we double dip in the third round and get the kid from UConn that in my mock draft, I told you, Bobby, I thought he was not going to be available at 99. And he was sitting there. Lucas Niang went a little bit before him, a couple picks. Uh, but we get Matthew Pert from UConn. Uh, so we're going to break him down today. Bobby, what are your initial thoughts on Matthew Pert? Good athlete. There's some things about his game that you don't see some, from other guys. But a, a little bit of a project. You can't put him in right away. He'll, get, look, he'll look silly against NFL defensive ends. But everything that you need to be there is, th is there. It's just about putting it all together for Pert. Pert it's it's Pert. true. Pert, Pert. Yeah. And it's uh, – it's, yeah, it's not pert to everybody. It's pert. So pert. hopefully we get used to that over the next few years. So we uh, took a risk with him uh, in the third round, but I'm, I'm going to argue I, I didn't think he was going to be there. And for us, that's uh, a good benefit because uh, it's a major piece for us on the offensive line, potentially moving forward. Uh, Bobby, when I, when I watched him on film, what one thing I noticed was uh, he, he looked like the only pro there on the UConn team. He looked like he belonged, especially in the games that we watched with uh, UCF, USF. Uh, I watched him against Houston. I watched him against Syracuse in 2018 against Alton Robinson. So you're going to get a couple different looks here. Um, but his draft profile, Bobby, 6'7", 320. Uh, very fast in the 40. But what I want everyone to remark is the three-cone drill and the 20-yard shuttle. Uh, he had an 801 uh, three-cone drill and a 4.9220 20-yard shuttle. And I want to compare this to Andrew Thomas. And when Bobby said very early on, the NFL teams value the three-cone and the 20-yard shuttle much more than the 40-yard uh, dash, this is an example. The three-cone drill for Andrew Thomas was in basically 7.5, so he's almost a half a second faster in that short area distance. Um, and about three or four tenths of a second faster in the 20 yard shuttle. So um, we got our guy at four, uh, but we got a developmental guy that I think you can see some of uh, the differences, especially in speed and short areas with Matthew Parrott uh, compared to Andrew Thomas. But we're going to look at all of this and uh, and more in the next few minutes. All right. First play. I wanted to, I wanted to show a uh, complication Bobby in the, you know, transition to the NFL. So here he is against UCF, him at right tackle, everybody. So here he is, number 65. And you'll see on the snap of the ball, he kind of loses the edge. Yeah, something that is very, like, the, the, big, the big negative that sticks out right away is one opening his hips. But in, like you mentioned earlier, his first step isn't vertical. It's to the side now. Maybe that's like a quick hitting pass, like jump set from UConn. But it's kind of consistent, and the fact that he opens his hips up early, and this guy's able to beat uh, beat him off the edge. Now there's t plays where he get he makes it work, but it is something that is consistent, and I think is the main reason why he's not ready to play day one. Here's our next play, another pass set. I like this drop a little bit better, Bobby. So stays vertical. Stays vertical first. He still opens his hips up a like earlier than you you want him to. But, like, for the most part, he because of how good he is as just an athlete and, you know, stronger than people, he's able to make it work. But in the NFL, like I said, that's what's going to give him trouble to start. Yeah, and because his first three steps went vertical, which means he just dropped directly backwards, it gave him a chance to not get beat. And you see at least his other foot is on the outside of the defender, which means he has the position. And the one thing you can't get beat is early around the edge, and he doesn't here. So – he is capable. That's why I wanted to show those two first. Here's a pass off of a stunt with a bully, Bobby. And that's the way you finish blocks when you when you when you got that guy at that seven eight yards of distance. Is that's when you could turn your hips and pull uh, and fold, dudes. And like you said, good job picking up the stunt. You know, I think it was a better job on the guard, but nonetheless, yeah. a good job when there was times where UConn struggled with that. But he's getting punched in the neck here. So if we go inside the breakdown, look at that right in the throat. 
but he's got a good wide base, man. Like, yeah, that's so noticeable. Like he always keeps his feet wide. It's excellent. Finishes it off. There's another one. Another one staying vertical. This is good, but it just it doesn't. He doesn't finish it off well. He doesn't. But, like the start to that was really well. Very calm. I noticed he was calm in his drops. Didn't did you? Yeah, there's never like any panic in his game. You, I mean, you see it in, in the run game and his pulls and stuff like that. He's never like, he's never like missing guys after after like trying to worrying about getting beat over the top or something. Yeah. If you're still watching and you're like, what is what is going on with these two hair? We just wanted to present to you quarantine hair. Okay, this is what Afro happened. Skinner shout out. <laughs> Afro Skinner, yeah, just hit him up on his burner. Uh, here's this is also poor film quality, but I wanted to zoom in because it's very difficult on all 22 to see the tackle. Uh, but again, he's over here on the right tackle. Uh, on this one, Bobby, I thought he had a really, really good drop. I'd like that he got his left hand on him first, um, but you see him hold him towards the end, you know? That's what they teach you is once you do open your hips up, is you put, if you're on the a right, if you're at right tackle, you put that left hand on his hip and you just, and just wash him out of the pocket. Yeah. I think he always keeps his feet up field. It's really good. Yeah. Leans a little bit on that one, but is able to recover. Yes. So I think this gets beat in the NFL pretty bad, this next play, Bob. Um, because I think he actually gets beat here. Right there is that lean, you know? Um, yeah. It's just such a heavy lean. I just don't think that defensive end in the NFL, if they, if they can get you leaning like that, I think they can beat you pretty easy. He's got those long arms. I mean, he's got longer arms than than Andrew Thomas. And it's good. He needs to learn how to get that a punch out quick, though, because a lot of times it just seems like – like, and it, he's not, but there's a lot of times where it just looks like he's holding. It's just because he has his arms are so long and they're bent like this yeah where you want him to do like this and then you know and then out and a lot of times it's a lot of times he's just like kind of grabbing instead of punching yeah um but he actually was one of the stronger offensive line he had 26 reps on the bench bobby and sometimes i do see that strength whenever he gets into that fight you know the yeah, he's the, got pure strength and athleticism i mean that's something that they bet on yeah um i i wanted to, to stop on this one i know we were ch chatting about the previous plays but in the run game uh, this is a very difficult block. It's a reach block. Um, he's got to he's got to get around and turn his hip his left hip around so that he can close off the space. Now, why is this important? This play was a touchdown, and so the guard that's pulling does a great job of picking up the free rusher. The lead blocker is now coming through the hole, and this is where I thought you know you don't pay attention to the guy in the backside all the time, but look at this. If he doesn't close him out, Bobby, there's no touchdown. So yeah, and he could have done a better job with, you know, getting a little lower and, yeah. and driving through and setting his feet once, you know, because he did get, like, pushed back a little bit. But nonetheless, the main, op the main objective of that play on the backside is to just seal your guy off. Do you think he get so in looking at this one, NFL speed, right, can, can he hold that off with how high he was on that block? Is he just going to get bowled over? early on we can see it now in he, full speed. he definitely needs to get lower it's one thing he needs to do but in the nfl also those defensive ends because there's so much like of contain 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 the nfl they're not really like going one-on-one -on -one with you they're more keeping they're keeping themselves a horizontal with the line of scrimmage and trying to wall off instead of trying to just bully these guys that's true that's true i just if there if there's that down block you know and you see the guard pulling and you're the tackle on the other side you know they, they're going to be screaming down the line of scrimmage, too. Um, so he, at play strength, the thing that I want people to take away, at least from what I saw, is there could just be that up in play strength, right? He, he, he might need some time to develop there. I think he has the strength. I think he just needs to be use in a it. sense a little, more, <laughs> a little more like a bully, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Sometimes, like, and coaches will, like, always technique, technique. Sometimes you just kind of got to, like, try and missile through a dude. You know what I'm saying? And bend. <laughs> yeah. And and bend and, and, you know, and be, like, risk falling on your face to just move a guy five, six yards. It's funny because that's the difference between Andrew Thomas and Jedrick Wills for me. I think Wills, as a technician, you know, is always going to do the right thing. Um, and he might pancake you over time. But I felt like Thomas had a few of the dominating blocks by just, yeah, again, maybe sometimes not the right technique, but – exerting his will on others um right. this is one where i think we're a little confused on exactly what his responsibility is but he comes inside 
it looks like he's supposed to at least get a piece of this guy because there's another blocker coming, right, Bobby, that wham block? Yeah, the wham block comes, and he probably shouldn't have turned his hips immediately, but I think what the job was is to, you know, do your duck waddle to the second line level and just put that right arm out to just hold that guy off for a second, turn his hips for the wham block, but he does a good job against the second level on it and sealing the play. Yeah, because that hole is there. Look how big – I mean, the hole is there for seven yards. Imagine Saquon having this, though, Bobby. Like, you could just – it's five, six yards of real estate just And that's the out. thing with Saquon. You, so on the backside, you don't need to dominate, guys. You just need to get a hat on a hat. Exactly. And that is the thing about Peart that is the most impressive, and we'll see it as we go on, is he, in the run game, has amazing angles. I think it's the best part of his game. He is always going to seal a guy off. He always gets to his guy. Does he dominate the guy when he gets there all the time? No. But there's never a time where a linebacker just scrapes over the top of him. And that's one of the hardest things to do. And I felt like that was the, just the strength of his game. This is it. This is it right here. It's all angles, you know? He does, he does a great job of getting his hands on you. I, th- I, I wrote in my notes, Bobby, he has mitts. You know, he has yeah. pure mitts. You look at his feet. Like, yes, he's big, 6'7", but you could see his feet are, like, size 19, 20. <laughs> they are. And this is when he gets in trouble with his lean. So, here's – I thought this was a good example of where he has a little bit of trouble with his lean. Engages. He's too forward. And that was a smaller defensive end, Bobby, too. Well, that's the thing is because he has, like, that arm bend, guys are in him. And yeah. he needs to kind of get that arm extension a little better. But those, I mean, those are things that are definitely workable. That's him holding up defensive end. It's a good view on the stunt here. There you go. Really nice. Want to see the big guy in space, Bobby? Here he Let's is. Let's do it. Pulling. Tackles don't pull. And they usually aren't very good when they do it, even though we enjoy it more than anything in the world. I know. But here, he knows how to pull. And he, like I said, he always gets to his guy, and he does an awesome job here on a play that you really don't run, see a lot, especially in college. And he gets on the outside, and one of the hardest things to hit to do is get a good target on a DB linebacker at that speed. Yep. And he gets on it, and he just foul out, lays the dude out for a touchdown too. Head was on a swivel, Bobby. That's the kind of stuff that you put on your highlight tape as an offensive tackle. He, he felt like he was bouncing. Like, he, he is light on his feet, man. And you just See? like he keep he's got his hips square and he's just that head turn that head turn wait waiting for someone to cross his face. I know and he but, finds this guy and just puts his shoulder into him. That's where that's where we talk about his strength. Where sometimes like don't try and like you know fit your hands on the perfect way. Yeah. just run through a dude. He could have blown that. He, he could have blown that guy up, and he probably should have. It's like you're already at the end zone anyway, man. Just go for the hit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the mean streak is interesting. I don't. Do you think Colombo is a mean person? Do you think like he's gonna bring an actual set of anger into each? I mean, each he player? does have a heavy metal band, so I mean, probably not like the nicest guy in the world. Okay. And so he, look- you know what? I do because remember he tried to fight Brandon Jacobs after a game. So yes, oh, that's I right. do. Okay. So yeah, let's just get pissed off on the offensive line. That's all we want. If I get another tackle that won't anchor Bobby, and w- won't just deal with the fist fight that's coming, I'm gonna flip. And I-, I think we got two guys that can handle that, which is great on both ends in one draft. This is okay. This, this is, is laziness. I okay. So th- th- I think this was posted on Twitter by one of those draft guys. I don't remember their names, but they said this is uh, Matthew Pert losing to an undrafted free agent defensive end from Wagner. Um, well, well, for one, congrats on the guy from Wagner for getting a, a chance at the NFL. I don't feel like that's a, a slight at anybody from no, Wagner. No, it's not. But yeah, he just. For some reason, and he's very good at keeping, like, guys on the outside of him. You never really see guys counter inside. Part of that is him opening his hips a little too early. That's kind of an issue we have with Nate Solder. Is Nate Solder so scared of getting beat inside that he just lets guys beat him outside? But this is here. And instead of powering down with that left foot, he tries to put it, stick him out with his – stick out with his arm. And it's just it's, – that's laziness. I, I see you. Look how – in so if you can see right here – this defensive tackle has won the battle right here. The, he is standing straight up, and there's no chance he can anchor now. The pocket is gone. I will say it's a little better than what – if someone was like, this is the horrible play. It's up not. Here, right. It's not, like, it doesn't make you like – it doesn't make you cringe, but it wasn't great. I agree. 
I mean, you'll see that happen. I mean, we saw that, you know, even in Gates' is good games, that was one of his issues is sometimes he would get driven back into the pocket here and there. Another second level play, Bobby. Tackle getting to the second level. Parrot has to come down to the second level and pick up this guy. See how he does. Perfect. 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 And then finishes it too. Perfect. That's another one you put on the highlight tape. Did this guy get undrafted from Wagner? (laughs) Probably. But he squares up. That's what I'm happy about. Give the running back a choice. You know, we've talked about you give him a choice because he could go inside or outside if he wanted to. And that's the thing is a lot of times when you see guys are able to get to that second level quickly, their their base is very narrow because they're worried about getting there quickly. He keeps his base wide and he's able to get there, which is, you know, hard to see. Good job picking up the stun on this one. I so I like him. I like him covering stunts. I don't. I don't know. Even this one, actually, a little late on that one, but not. I mean, you, they figured it out. It's because it's a good spin move. It's actually because he see how he loses his hands on his back. Yeah. So that makes him lean a little bit. You're right. He could have. He could have come off that block sooner. Not losing the hand fight. I wanted to see what you thought about this. Is this bad on him or or not? Uh, he kind of loses the stunt to the inside. Yeah, because – and run through it again if you can. I will. He's looking for the kick slide when he comes – and eh, that was a good stunt. I won't hate on that one. Because that guy does you're the expect, right. You're expecting that guy to come out. And the guard does a bad job to start off anyways. He lets, yeah. The guard gets beat inside anyways, even if that guy wasn't running a stunt. So yeah. that one's on the guard. I, I The defensive lineman played it perfectly because you see how skinny he gets on the stunt. And that puts the pressure immediately. 24 I, sold the outside rush well, he, too. He did. But I think, like, in a game where, you know, you've got to manage the pocket, as long as you keep playing – you give your guy a chance. Mm-hmm. And we see, you know, especially on the play side, right tackle, which is what Parrot would be if Andrew Tom's left tackle. That's right. And that's one of the reasons I want Nate Solder's right tackle is it's a lot easier for your QB to see that and adjust. We can have that conversation later. <laughs> <laughs> Big guy out in space. Just Love very, it. Get very on a comfortable. corner. Get yeah. on a corner. That's hard to do. That you, you think, oh, big guy, small guy. Big guy wins. One of the hardest things to do is putting a hat on a corner. Look how light he is. I just think it's – he's so comfortable. He's not nervous. He's an athlete. He's a yeah. basketball player. He yeah. is an athlete. And, he, you know, maybe needs to bulk up a little bit. But I, I don't really care if he bulks up a little bit. I'm, I, I know they want him to be a little bigger in his frame. I'm fine with him at the size he's at. I, really, I don't know what that totally means about frame, Bobby, because – He doesn't look fat at all. He's 320. Because he's straight muscle. It's unbelievable. Yeah. He's 6'7", my lord. Here it is. So I think I got Bobby excited because I got some clips from this game. It is against Alton Robinson. And last year, uh, 2018 Syracuse defensive line, which was pretty solid in general. Um, he Here you can see some of the hesitation to play this kid day one. If you just think you can throw him in and he's going to be better than Fleming or Gates or even Solder – this is this was a good game to sort of see. Oh, okay, he's got he's got some room to grow here because Alton Robinson, although he's just you know a middle round draft pick, has has the kind of NFL speed that you're looking for that he didn't get to play all the time at UConn and power. So this this is this one where, like you said, this is Alton Robinson. This is where I said. He opens his hips up a little too early, but he's able to usually win that battle because he's playing against people who are just not on the same physical level as him. Alton Robinson is a guy who probably would have been drafted higher. There's like there's off the field concerns there for Alton Robinson. Alton Robinson is a really good player. He's somebody I would have loved for the Giants to consider if they were there at a spot they you know where they felt it was right. So, but and Alton Robinson is great at staying low, getting off the edge, and and being able to bull rush or use his speed, and he does both in this play. And like you said, this is where – this is the reason why he can't play day one. Speed to power. He, Alton goes up the field and then right into his chest. 
that pocket is gone. Now the left the left tackle also lost the battle too. So the entire <laughs> offensive line lost the battle on this. This one. is not a pocket, everyone. <laughs> you couldn't fit a mouse in there. Alton's a good player. I, I hope he gets his stuff straight. I'm uh, I'm from upstate New York originally. I'd like to see kids from Syracuse do well. Here's him on a run block. This is where I thought, okay, he can get physical. Mm-hmm. I and thought that's something you want him to do is finish a little more often, and he does that on this. Play. He does finish. He finishes his run blocks. But this one was a fight. That kid came at him. He didn't lose any ground. This is pure speed. This is him against the pure speed. I mean, that I is, don't know if this this might be coaching. Is watch his first step. It's stepping out, and I get there's there's a thing called a jump set, but I don't know if like you want to be jump setting against Allen Robinson, right? It's out. It's horizontal. That yeah. against a guy like Alt Robinson, that first, especially a guy who opens up his hips a little too early. I don't know if this is scheme or just bad technique on Parrot, but he needs to have that first step to be uh, vertical, back. not horizontal. Yeah, that, it would it would save him. I think I honestly think it's coaching, man. I think it's going to get drilled in his head. A pro coach is not going to allow a side step on his first step. I mean, and that's the, co- the first thing that coaches drill into you is step one. Step one really constitutes how good or bad your block could be. This guy will put fear into you, though. That's an elite bend. That's an elite bend. He gets, beat, bef- he gets beat before five yards. That is a th- basically a three-step drop, and he got there from the defensive end position. So this is where you, you just pause a little bit. You let him grow. You get him reps against NFL players. Even the third-string guy on the Giants is going to be better than most guys he played in college. That's a real thing. We're going to finish on this one, Bobby, because he just pancakes a dude. And I love it. Love. I love it. So here he is, a right tackle going up against 97. It's harder to see. I don't have the all 22. Gets a hat on a hat. Look at the extension. Good extension. And then he drives. Loses you, the block a little bit. Listen, if you're a tackle, you could turn that guy out. You turn him out. And now he's standing over his dead body. <laughs> Get him, big man. That's our third round pick. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So this means this means a lot for the Giants, I think, Bobby, because he's not. I don't. I do. I mean, I don't. I know they won't expect him to play right away, but when you draft a guy in the third round at offensive tackle, which is only the second time we've done, we've we've only drafted two linemen in the first three rounds. The last time we did that was 1989 and 88. We got Jumbo Elliott was in one of those two. We went back to back offensive linemen in the first two rounds in those drafts. We haven't done that since then. And we did it with Matthew Parrott. Uh, I think he was worth it, Bobby. I I told you the, the combination of him, Lemieux and Thomas, it just changes our entire depth chart on the offensive line. And it gives us a future at the position, even if we have Nate Solder still there that can contribute, Nick Gates, who came out of nowhere and became a player for us. We now have guys everywhere in the line. I think Matthew Parrott is the one, though, that really turned the draft on its head because we could have went defense. You know, we could have went wide receiver. We could have went with a lot of other positions, and we chose to reinvest in the tackle position. So You want, your, you want to see your third rounders on the field to start their rookie season. You really yep. do. So I get that. Like, you don't have a guy who's going to come in and be an impact player right away. But nonetheless, if Parrot can put it all together, you now have Andrew Thomas and, and, and a left tackle and a right tackle for hopefully the next 10 years. You know what I'm saying? So I like the pick. It, it's a chance. It's a guy who, does, who is a little raw. I mean, he didn't start playing football until high school. He's a basketball player. Um, one of my favorite things about him is he did grow up a Giants fan in the Bronx. And Sean O'Hare oh, yeah. and David Deal asked him who his favorite Giants offensive lineman was. He couldn't think of any of them. So he didn't watch a lot of Giants games, but he was a Giants <laughs> fan. Uh, finally, he ended up on Will Beatty, which is funny enough. That makes sense. The UConn connection. So, yeah. But nonetheless, I like the pick. I want to see him grow, get a little meaner, and we can have some bookend tackles for the next 10 years. And that's it for Talking Giants. So if you want to watch highlight tapes, go somewhere else. 
We're going to show you the players that we got. We're going to show you what they can do and where they need to improve. So, um, you know, we're excited about them overall, all of them. But, you know, hopefully we can see what the coaches have in a little bit more detail. So thanks for joining this edition of Talking Giants YouTube. Matt